Hi, I'm Dan Cortapassi. Welcome. Uh, as you can see, we're still not in my train room. We're in my living room. Um, that's because the work on the train room has been taking a little longer than we expected, but I think that's just kind of par for the course when you're doing construction. Um, anyway, uh, hopefully soon we'll have the new floor in and can start really getting going on the train room, which is pretty exciting to me. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, before we get into the box of the month, I thought I'd talk a little bit about the reviews, kind of do a little brief recap of the reviews from 2018. Uh, if I counted right, I did 23 reviews in 2018, and one of those was a hands-on review, which wasn't scored. Um, of the other ones, the highest score was a 95 out of 100, so no perfect scores. Um, the most common failing was coupler height, either one end or both ends. And I've gotten some uh, comments and uh, you know people messaging me and whatnot asking about that and, and why am I such a stickler. And I may have mentioned this before, but I'm gonna go ahead and mention it again. It's, it's all because of my experience uh, running trains. I used to have a layout that had 4% grades with curves. And at least once or twice, I had a train break apart in the middle and half the cars go rolling back down the track at really high speeds with absolutely no control. And uh, fortunately, I didn't end up with all of them on the floor, but you know, bad things can happen if your train comes apart, if, you're un if your couplers let go at the wrong time. So all of the things I worry about, wheel gauge, coupler height, all that stuff, it, all, you know, it's really geared toward reliable operation and making sure that the trains stay on the track and don't come apart when you don't want them to. And that's, that's why I do that. So um, anyway, I just wanted to touch on that. Um, I also want to maybe uh, in this coming year, maybe do some more videos on like, I, I always talk about coupler height, but maybe show how I fix it. Cause that's one of the things that I end up having to fix quite often. And you know, it's, it's usually a fairly simple fix too. So um, I'd like to maybe start doing a few little things like that. So pretty excited for the coming year, new train room, maybe a n new video or two or new topics that I could cover. So uh, I think it's going to be a good year. Anyway, uh, right now let's get to box of the month. Okay, so in case anyone doesn't know, this is Nicole. Hello. And we're going to go through another box. So let's see what's in this one. Trains. Trains. <laughs> wow, what a surprise. What a surprise. Okay. So this is a Kato C44-9W in Union Pacific colors. This is... Is this how it came? Yeah, this one is pretty stock. I've not really done too much to it. Um, I think I had a, a DCC decoder in it at one time, not sound, just regular uh, DCC, and then took it out and thinking that I was eventually going to put sound in it, which I still intend to do, but haven't gotten around to it yet. So this is a, some, something of a project, like a lot of the engines in these boxes. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything then. Yeah. Oh, this is uh, huh. different. It's a kit. A kit. This is a branch line blueprint series boxcar kit for a Santa Fe boxcar with the root, mm. root of the El Capitan on the side. Oh, that's cool. So you're putting that one together from scratch. Yeah, this is actually a 19, like 1950s-ish era boxcar. Uh, not really one that fits my normal uh, theme, but I, I did put together a, a train um, of 1950s vintage equipment, and this was one that I think I intended for that, but obviously didn't get around to finishing this particular car. I'm not sure why it's in the box with all the other locomotives, but, you know. So we pack fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Here we go, Atlas. Atlas. This is, uh, okay, this is... This is relatively new. This is a uh, Western Pacific U23. Yeah, yeah, U23B. 
in the uh, green and orange scheme. Oh, is that green? I thought it looked black. No, it's a dark, it's a dark green. Uh, oh, well, the box is a little bit of a pain, but. That is a pretty tray. Yeah. Western Pacific, uh, I, I love what WP, but it doesn't really fit my era because WP was uh, gobbled up by Union Pacific in like 1982, 83. Hmm. So um, by the 90s, it was gone. But That's a shame. I still, I, I have a few uh, pieces of WP equipment just because I like it. Because you like the look or you like where it rolled at? Both. Or? Both. It ran through the Feather River Canyon, which oh, is, yeah. Such a beautiful beautiful area and mm. um, unfortunately I didn't get to see see it too much when I was younger um, you know but I do like uh, do like it this one is actually equipped al already from the factory with a low sound uh, DC sound decoder so it's all ready to go pretty much nice yeah stick that over here for now okay this looks, that's curious to me. Oh, another <laughs> another General Electric engine. This one is very is unfinished. <laughs> block white is that way because it's unfinished. Okay. This is an undecorated, yeah. Okay. This is a C30-7, which I think I had intended for a Union Pacific unit. Um, they had a few of those. And obviously haven't done anything to it yet. So this is a, an Atlas model. Um, I guess at this point a fairly old Atlas model, but still a pretty good runner. So eventually it'll be a nice engine. Hmm. But right now it's another project. <laughs> oh. Another Atlas, okay. An SP. SP. This is a, one of the GE engines that SP bought right toward the end of the railroad and get out of the box. Yeah, this is, these are pretty nice, these Atlas units. Uh, so it actually represents a B39-8. The cotton belts were uh, B40-8s, I think. I'm not sure, they pretty much looked exactly the same, just a slight increase in horsepower, I think, was the reason for the difference, but. Mm. Um, this one, I don't think this one has a decoder in it yet, but it wouldn't take too much to get this one up to what I would consider to be, you know, ready to go. So, still a project, but not as much of a project as some of the ones I have. Well, it's not a blank canvas, so. No, no, that <laughs> no, one, this agree. one isn't going to be repainted or anything. I'm just going to uh, maybe add a little bit of detail here and there and you know, redo the electronics. Is that like one that you would weather? Yeah, weather. Okay. Weather too. Yeah. Uh, oh, there's ABNSF? another new one. New and and it's a newer model and new and it's uh, BNSF, which is too new for my era. But you know, I I tend to buy some stuff that doesn't really fit anything. <laughs> I I think I actually bought this one to review it at one point. Which is probably why I have it. But this is an Inner Mountain. Mm, it's very pretty. Yeah. These are the, the ones we see all the time when we're going up and down I-5, right? Yeah, this is an ES-44 DC. Yeah, this is one of the basically, you know, modern era engines that you see all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So. These are the ones we're chasing all the time. Yeah. To get good videos of. Yeah. It's got the pretty nice paint on this one. This one also already has a, a DCC and sound installed already, so it's pretty much all ready to run. So another one you just need to weather? Weather, yeah, pretty much. I, I figured, you know, I think I talked about this in another show, but um, even though my layout is going to be basically set in the 90s, there's going to be stretches of it that are just basically scenery. And I figure if I want to do photography, I could run any train through trees or rocks. You know, it's not really era specific. So it could be a 50s train, it could be a modern train, and it'll look just fine. So, okay. you know, that's 
doing video with the layout and, and is, is part of the thing I want to accomplish when I uh, get it going. And, and still photos also. All right, this is a big one. Another BNSF. How can you tell? It just says Genesis. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a picture on the end of the box. That's cheating. That's I thought cheating. you were magic. Oh. <laughs> No, this is uh, an SD70 Ace, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, do, it does look like the other one, just yeah. different numbers. Yeah, it's a, it's a different engine. That's a General Electric, and this is an EMD, but... Um, What's an EMD? Uh, electromotive Diesel. Okay. Or Electromotive Division, depending on... I think now it's Electromotive Diesel, because it used to belong to GM, and then they sold it off. I think it now actually belongs to Caterpillar. Last time oh. I checked, I don't know. I don't okay. keep up with that stuff. I just like the models. But um, yeah, this is a pretty nice engine too. And I believe this one might already have everything installed. ACC and sound and all that. Okay. This one I think is the one of the ones that has the, um, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Oh. The Athern, um SD70 Ace models have a removable roof with a little, it's pretty clever, it's little magnets that hold it on. So you oh, can just nice. take it off, it's got a detailed cab interior. Do they have little guys you can put in there? Yeah, you can buy, you can buy crew figures. Oh, that's cool. I don't think Atherin sells them, but you can get them from uh, Prizer or one of those. Nice. Yeah. So, oh, it does still have bulbs in it, which is something I'll want to change. Thankfully, Atherin recently started using LEDs, which is great. Because you prefer LEDs. I like do. Those little, the little bulbs, they just tend to burn out after a while. The LEDs pretty much last forever. So they're just, they're just better, especially if you have, you know, especially when the, I'm building the engines myself and I'm embedding lights into the, into the model, I don't want them to burn out because then it would be a real chore to take to it all take apart. Out. Yeah. I get that. So. And we have another atlas. This is <laughs> now that I know. Yeah, it's this one. This oh, quantum. This had had a QSI sound decoder in it. Um, I, no this, decoder. I have a little note in here that says no decoder. That's because <laughs> I got rid of all my QSI sound decoders on eBay. Oh, which sounds right pretty too. much should let you know what I think of them. And <laughs> we'll replace it with something else eventually. Um, this is an undecorated uh, yeah, C40-8, which I believe I had intended as a Union Pacific engine. Oh, okay. So, because um, they had quite a few of those. So it just needs like the paint job and all that stuff. Paint job, yeah. I don't have to do too much to it other than little small details because the basic body is correct. Um, at least I'm pretty sure it's correct. I'd have to, you know, when I actually get down to working on it, I'll check everything. But I'm pretty sure it's it's correct in all the major ways. So you check reference pictures and whatnot. reference pictures, yeah. And I've taken these are new enough that I've actually um, they existed in the '90s, but. Um, UP still had a few, especially when I was first getting into doing more serious rail fanning, kind of around 2004. And uh, I have some photo photos of these that I took myself, so I'll probably end up modeling one of those because I, I tend to like to model engines that I've actually seen myself, if I can. Goodness. All right. <laughs> and what's this one? This is, oh, Santa Fe. Ooh. Another Atherin Genesis. Let's see. Oh, pretty. This, this is an SD45-2. I like the Santa Fe paint scheme. Yeah, it's kind of cool looking. Whoops, and the handrail oh, no. just fell off. Oh, it's pretty detailed. This one, yeah, that'll pop back on. Oh, good. Yeah, so they're just, they tend to pop off pretty easily, but they're not too hard to just push back in there. Oh. But yeah, this, 
This one needs to be updated just a little bit for my 1990s era. Right now it's more like 1980s, uh, mostly because it still has a beacon on the roof. I think Santa Fe got rid of all of those around 1989 or so. And So you'll remove it? Yeah, I'll remove the beacon and just make it look like it would have looked in the 1990s. Maybe change a few details. But this is another one that's doesn't need a whole lot. It's pretty much there. Don't need to paint it or anything. It's... Oh, yellow paint on me. Maybe it was from this though. Oh, that's a that's a little. Um, Is it a little it's a written stencil. detail? It's a stencil. Yeah. Oh, it's just so tiny that I can barely make it out. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, they're actually that's neat because so cool. a lot of those you can actually read them. Sometimes you need a magnifying glass. Yeah. But you can actually read that. So. <laughs> It's pretty cool. This one's nice and That's heavy too. It cool. should pull really well eventually when I get it going. Nice. So. All right, last one. Last one. Okay. Last one. Do, 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 do. A little crowded here. Ooh, that's heavy too. Another Athern Genesis. What is this? <laughs> oh, Santa Fe. Oh, Santa Fe. No one would delicious. ever think I liked Santa Fe at all, right? Oh, the silver and red. Oh, it's my other. F forty five. I think, I think we saw ninety five at one point in one of the other boxes. This is ninety seven. So um, the reason I have ninety five and ninety seven is because they were both used on an excursion with thirty seven fifty one at one point, which is uh, the four eight four that still runs once in a while. It was a Santa Fe engine. And it's now, I think, owned by the San Bernardino something. I, I forget. <laughs> Um, anyway, it's, it's, but it, it was, I don't know if, it's hard these days, a lot of railroads make it difficult for steam engines to run on their lines anymore, but um, at least up until relatively recently it was running oh, fairly that's often. Cool. You know, like maybe once a year or so. Yeah. I don't know if that counts as fairly often, but. Hmm. More often than a lot of other steam engines. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is a really pretty paint scheme, too. Yeah, I, li I like the war bonnet. Yeah. That's one of the things I like about modeling the 90s is because Santa Fe brought back the, the war bonnet scheme, which I thought was really cool. Um, but I actually uh, have a model of 3751 somewhere, too, so I uh, could possibly recreate the, the excursion or at least something like it. Well, that could be cool. Yeah. 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 So, and that's it. That's it. Okay. That's the last one. So another box of mostly engines <laughs> that are mostly projects. <laughs> <laughs> various um, uh, degrees of difficulty, I guess you could say. Well, yeah. Yeah. I imagine that once the room gets finished and we can actually lay things out, we can make, um, and we've gone through some of these ones, <laughs> yeah. we can actually make boxes that are like, this is complete, and this just needs to be painted, and this needs everything. <laughs> <laughs> And we can get a little bit more organized. That but, would be good. Yeah. Right now, it is what it is. Yeah. Trains! Trains, yeah. <laughs> anyway. And it's pretty cool. So. Yeah, it yeah. is pretty cool. I have fun. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. So, <laughs> anyway, I guess that's that for Box of the Month this week. Yeah. And, or this month. And um, we'll see you next time. So, yeah. thanks for thanks watching. Thanks for watching.